If you're a diabetic and I want to lower your blood sugars and HbA1c, then watch really carefully. Because in this video we're gonna share with you three secrets of perfect blood sugars. Let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Tom. I've been a diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. Today I'm joined by Dennis Pollock, one of my favorite diabetes YouTubers who managed to beat diabetes and who consistently provides so much value in his videos. And today Dennis will be sharing his secrets that help him consistently achieve perfect blood sugars even after his diabetes diagnosis. Dennis, welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm so glad that you found time to join us here. And for those who have been living under the diabetes YouTube rock, could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, thanks Tom for having me on your channel. And uh, let me start out by saying I'm an ordinary guy. I am not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, just a regular fella who saw type two diabetes coming at me like a steamroller and I managed to avoid it and have been been doing so for about the last 18 years. My background that gives me a particular interest in diabetes, other than the fact that I almost was a diabetic and have had to work hard to avoid being a diabetic, is first of all, my mom was a diabetic and uh, it just absolutely spoiled the last probably 15, 16 years of her life. She was in and out of the hospital, had all kinds of issues, uh, strokes, heart attacks, had stents and various procedures done to her, ended up with one leg amputated, then a second leg amputated, and then it didn't heal and she had to have it re-amputated a little higher. She had a terrible quality of life those last years, uh, really the last decade and a half of her life. So when I began having some blood sugars, you can guess where my mind went. Went right back to mom and the troubles she had and it looked like it's coming right at me and I was highly motivated to do something about it. And then the second issue that made it uh, particularly a, a big deal to me, <laughs> I mean diabetes is a big deal by itself, but I had a particular uh, condition that is uh, a little different from many uh, diabetics or pre-diabetics and I think it's called reactive hypo hypoglycemia or postprandial hypoglycemia. I was having natural hypos. Now type 1 diabetics, and I know your channel is dedicated to type 1s, uh, they get hypos from taking too much insulin. But in my case, I wasn't taking any insulin, but my pancreas was overreacting and I would uh, jump up way too high at one point after eating a high carb meal and then I would go way too low. Uh, I would feel like I was going to pass out. One time I did pass out. The uh, paramedics had been called. They soon got there. My blood sugar was so low it didn't even have a number reading when they tested it. So I had some real problems and I was highly motivated to do something about it. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your mom, Dennis, and the issues that you had yourself managing your blood sugars earlier. It sounds like you have quite a bit of experience with real life diabetes challenges and complications. And honestly, it's inspiring to hear how motivated you were to do something with your health situation. I think we all need this kind of motivation sometimes. Dennis, you agreed to share some of the secrets that helped you get your blood sugar under control and beat diabetes. Thank you so much for doing that. So let's get right into it. Dennis, what are your three favorite tips that you think all the viewers need to hear about. The first uh, tip I would give or word of encouragement is you can see victory. This can be done. Diabetes is not quite the unbeatable monster many people make it out to be. Now some of you type 1s are saying, well wait a minute, you know, I, I, I can never go without insulin. Well maybe not, but that doesn't mean you can't beat it. To me beating diabetes doesn't necessarily mean you, you have to no longer take insulin. You will, you know, as a type 1 have to take insulin. What it means is it does not have to shorten your life. It does not have to spoil your life. You don't have to have all kinds of terrible complications. Uh, you can live out a full, a whole life healthy and full of years. Uh, Dr. Richard Bernstein is my hero and I know Tom has declared he's his as well. Uh, he's in his 80s. He's doing great. He's been doing great for, <laughs> I guess, about 45, 50 years or more as a type 1. And he makes it work. You can make it work as well, but you got to work at it a little bit and do your research 
and uh, take the necessary steps. The second point that I would make, and uh, one that anybody who has a glucose meter or a CGM can figure out in a hurry, is that carbohydrates raise glucose. They raise it significantly. Protein doesn't raise it near as much. Fats don't raise it hardly at all. But carbohydrates, they sure do. And as I said, anybody can figure this out. Now, this has implications for bringing your glucose under control. Let's talk about the type 1 and then the type 2 experience. As a type 1, your goal, of course, is to match your insulin with the carbs that are in your meals so that you don't go too high, you don't drop too low. It's difficult, for sure. But Dr. Bernstein talks about the law of small numbers. In other words, it's a whole lot easier to keep your glucose under control and uh, everything running smoothly if you just don't eat that many carbohydrates in your meal. The goal is to just simply bring those carbs down, bring that glucose down, and as a type 1, you can uh, get things under control and you can be much more precise in uh, how you bring that glucose down and how much insulin you have to administer to yourself. So, you know, and that's what Dr. Bernstein practices. That's what he has encouraged. Now, with a type 2 who does not have to take insulin, then your pancreas is the one having to do the work. It's going to have to do that heavy lifting. You, you're not going to be taking insulin. But once again, the same principle holds. By keeping the carbs low, your pancreas won't have to work near as hard, and things will go so much better for you. And your pancreas can handle, oftentimes, a low-carb meal without any problem. You may see a small spike, a gentle rise in blood sugar, but not much. On the other hand, if you eat a meal that has a lot of carbs, a big old baked potato, and you have a dessert, and you have a large Coca-Cola, and have some ice cream on that dessert, uh, your, your glucose is going to go into the stratosphere. So obviously, you're giving your body much less, much easier time of it, much, much less work by eating the low-carb meals. I mean, anybody can figure that out. That's not rocket science. Anybody would agree with that. Where some people don't agree is they say, all right, yeah, you're right. Uh, obviously, uh, it would be easier on my pancreas, but if I eat, uh, if I don't eat carbs, I'm going to have to eat more fat or more protein or more protein plus more fat, and that's going to give me heart problems and I'll die of a heart attack, so what have I really gained? Well, the good news is uh, we've, we've discovered that when you eat uh, more protein and fat and you keep those carbs low, uh, it does not affect heart. It does not cause uh, heart disease. The heart disease typically comes when you eat a high high carb plus a high fat diet. And that's, of course, what we call here in America the standard American diet. As a type 2, you want to keep the carbs low. That's how it is with carbohydrates. When they're coming at you harder and harder, faster and faster, your body can't keep up, especially if you've got a diabetic body or a pre-diabetic body, and it's going to lead to more problems. So uh, carbohydrates will drive glucose high, and if you want to keep it under control, you just have to cut the carbs. I've never recommended zero carbs, no carbs at all. You'd have to be almost on an all-meat diet. But you could definitely cut those carbs way down and eat more meat and uh, green leafy vegetables, uh, some dairy products like cheese and heavy cream, and uh, your carbs will be quite low. You'll still have some carbs, but not that many. A third point that has to do with glucose control is the use of meters to figure out where you are and what's happening with your blood sugar. You just have to know that. And that involves, the, the, the meter will give you two things. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a glucose meter where you prick your finger or a CGM where you wear a patch and you scan yourself. Either way, you're going to get information you badly need. Correct information. It's going to tell you uh, where you are, which direction you're going, what foods raise blood sugar. When I was just young in these things, uh, there was a lot I didn't know. And one time I remember I had a meal where I had some salmon and a large banana. And my blood sugar went way too high, and I didn't think it would because it's like, well, what could be healthier than salmon and a banana? And uh, that was my first introduction to the idea that fruits can really, really raise blood sugar. 
How did I know that? I learned it from my meter. I looked at my meter. It said, you know, the number was too high. I'm thinking, all right, wait a minute. This is a healthy meal. This is salmon and a banana. But then I began to test and I began to realize bananas are not the friend of the diabetic. They raise blood sugar way too much. So you got to use a meter. It'll give you information. But there's something even more important. Well, maybe not more important, but just as important. And that is motivation. Uh, for a lot of diabetics, their problem is not that they don't know what to do. Many of them know what they should do, but they just don't have the will, the motivation to do it. But when you're testing yourself frequently and you eat certain foods and they drive your blood sugar way high and you eat other foods and they don't drive your blood sugar high at all, your blood sugar stays in bounds and it just rises gently, you get motivated. You're like, well, hey, why should I eat the food that drives my blood sugar crazy when I can have the meal that is gentle? And the good news is there's all kinds of meals that will do this. There's, you know, The more you research, the more you test yourself, the more you realize, here's another meal that works for me. Here's another meal that works. Here's another meal. And you build up a repertoire of good, solid, healthy, low-carb meals that will not drive your blood sugar crazy. And that's what we all need, whether you're a type 1 or a type 2. You want those meals that are not going to spike glucose that much. Now, some people will write to me and they'll say, Dennis, don't you know that all meals are going to raise blood sugar and, you know, you shouldn't be so worried about spikes. Well, they're right and they're wrong. All meals will raise blood sugar, but they won't all raise it equally. Some meals will raise my blood sugar from 95 to 112. I'm perfectly good with that. I'm, I find that totally acceptable. You say, well, that's a rise. Sure it is, but it's not much of a rise. There's other meals that will raise my glucose from 95 to 222. Well, obviously, those are the meals that I avoid. So don't, you know, you can't just say, well, they'll all rise blood sugar, so it doesn't really matter. There's a huge difference between various meals and foods. And the more you test yourself, the more you realize what foods work and which ones don't. You know, these days I can look at a plate of food with four, five, six different foods on, on that plate. And I can say, this one is good, this one is not, this one will work, this one won't. And I'll, I can easily see what I should choose and what I should leave on the plate or leave in the diner or whatever. So you, you've got to test. Uh, if you can afford a CGM, great. If you can't afford one, you know, get the glucose meter that you prick yourself and get draw blood out of a finger. Somewhere or another, you got to know what's going on. This will give you information. It will help you make solid choices for foods to eat and it will inspire you and motivate you and you will find that you have the motivation to do what you need to do and make the choices you need to make. And let me give one little word of uh, advice or counsel or encouragement or a tip, whatever you want to call it, a hack. And that is the one thing I want to avoid at all costs is a major spike. And, you know, I talked about that before, but spikes are so important. And the only way you can know that is to test yourself before meals and then test yourself an hour, hour and a half, two hours after you eat, depending on when you tend to hit your peak. And you'll find which meals spike your blood sugar a lot and which ones don't. And uh, so uh, avoid those spikes. In fact, the diet that I essentially recommend, and granted, the people that I uh, am encouraging and speaking to on my YouTube channel are type 2 diabetics, but really it would work just as well for type 1s. And Dr. Bernstein, again, recommends this as well. But it's a low spike diet. I don't really even call it a low carb diet. Well, sometimes I do, but the reality is it's a low spike diet. In other words, I have my goal. And my goal is for me, and I, you have to set your own goal, but for me, it's 140. If a meal spikes my glucose up to 140, I'm okay. Although I prefer it to not go much higher than 130. But if a meal shoots it up to 150, 180, 200, 250, or whatever, I'm not okay and I won't eat that meal again. I may modify it. I may change one component of it or eat less of this and more of that. But somehow I'm going to have to make some changes. So I like to think of my particular diet as a low spike diet that I've developed for myself and we all have to do it for ourselves that will make sure that those blood sugar rises are gentle. Yeah, there will be one but a nice, gentle, smooth glucose rise 
not a huge spike. You're just going way too high and then you're dropping way too low. And there are diabetics like that and type 1s particularly have a, a trouble with that. So they're going from hypos to surges, from hypos to surges to hypos and back and forth again. It's not good. It's not healthy. And so we want gentle, you know, nice, moderate, gentle rises and then nice, moderate, gentle decreases. And uh, that's only possible if you keep your carbs on the low side. Wow, Dennis, that's so inspiring and I love the term low spike diet. It's actually something that I've been working on quite a bit lately. And I realized there are meals like pizza and some kinds of Indian food that always spike my blood sugar. And as a type 1 diabetic with insulin pump, I can take insulin at a very specific time in a very specific amount to fight those carbs. I can pre-bolus, I can do extended bolus, but anyway, I've never been able to get my bolus quite right for this kind of meals and I feel like I always spike. And I think you really hit the nail on the head when you spoke about motivation. I think motivation is so so important. You know just a few weeks ago I really focused on keeping my blood sugars in target on my continuous glucose monitor and I wanted to do a full week of 100% in target blood sugars and I managed two days three days four days in target and with every additional day I stayed in target I could feel I'm even more and more motivated and it's even easier for me to stay in that target and guys if you watch my channel if you've been watching for some time you know that's not always been the case for me I've actually been the exact opposite when it comes to type 1 diabetes and motivation this has really been some powerful stuff that we heard from Dennis today and I want to hear from you what is your secret to keep your blood sugars under control let us know in the comments if you want more tips on how to lower your blood sugars and HbA1c then click on one of the videos on the screen right now and if you want to check out Dennis's channel I will put a link for you in the show notes thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next type on talks video ciao